Hi, I'm Charlie with Precision Matthews, and I help a lot of customers to go over their lathe builds and make sure they're including everything they need in their order. I find myself answering some of the same questions over and over, and one of those questions is, should I add the quick change tool post to a lathe that doesn't have one as standard equipment? Like I've noted in previous videos, I love talking with people about machine tools, but when I find myself going over the same information a couple times a week for years, it's time to make a video about the topic. So in this video, we'll go over the advantages of the quick change tool post so you can decide if you'd like to add one to your lathe order. Let's get started. In this video about our quick change tool post, we'll start, oddly enough, with our regular four-way tool post. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with a tool post like this, and there are thousands of these tool posts out there making perfectly good parts. I'm putting this threading tool in, cranking down the screws to fix it in place, then scooting the tailstock over to check that the tool is even in height with the center axis of the spindle. As you might expect with no shims installed at all, this tool is quite a bit below the tip of the live center, so we'll need to do something about that. First, we'll need some point of reference for where that center is in space, and most people will measure the distance between the top of the cross slide casting and the tip of the tailstock center. Now you can do that with a height gauge or comparator, but all it really takes is a trip to the scrap pile and 10 or 15 minutes of machine time to make your own gauge that is that exact height. I make one of these for any lathe I'm going to be working on, and it stays with the lathe specifically for setting tool heights. With the center axis of our spindle represented by our shop made height gauge, we can see again that the tip of the tool is quite a bit too low. So I'll remove this tool, slide in a stack of shims to raise it up, and secure the tool back in the tool post. If this is a tool that you'll be using all the time, a tidier way to do this is to create a custom shim at the mill that is exactly the right thickness, but I'm doing it the quick and dirty way with this stack of shims. You can feel with your thumb when the tip of the tool is flush to the top of the height gauge, and your thumb can feel the difference of less than a thousandth of an inch, so this is quite an accurate way to set a tool height. So that's the four-way tool post, but what about the quick change option? To remove the stock tool post, we just unscrew the top, slide it up and off, then remove the T-nut and tool post spindle from the compound slide. This T-nut has a few set screws to keep it in place, but they're not strictly necessary and not all models have them. The quick change tool post comes with a solid block at the bottom that can be milled to fit your specific compound casting, or we offer pre-machined T-nuts that we make in-house for many of our lathe models. To install your quick change tool post, you just thread it onto the T-nut and tighten down the top nut. Man, take a drink every time I say tool post in this video. I'm sorry, as far as I know, there are no synonyms for tool post that I can use to mix it up. Tool post. We will want to set the angle of the tool post so that it's perpendicular to the spindle axis, and the best way to do this is to use a 1-2-3 block against the face of the spindle to square everything up. I didn't want to walk 40 feet to my toolbox, so I used another perfectly square thing that I had on hand. The four-way tool post that I just took off. Use that as a parallel, tighten down the top nut, and Bob's your uncle. Here we'll show how the tool holder goes onto the tool post, then how the tool goes into the holder. It's pretty self-explanatory, which is good because my hands are in the way for much of this shot, but I think it gives the process a compelling air of mystery. At least that's what I told Jeff the cameraman when he complained. But anyway, in goes the threading tool, we crank down the fixing screws, and we're ready to thread. Not so fast. We still have to set the tool height. That's a lot easier on the quick change tool post than on the one it's replacing because we have this knurled nut on top that bears on the body of the tool post and determines how far down on the dovetails the tool holder goes. You screw that knurled nut up or down to lower or raise the tool. And when you're happy with your tool height, just snug down the nut on top to keep that set. So with that information, we'll use our trusty height gauge and set the height of the tool with the knurled nut. 
I didn't video my trial and error process of getting a good stack of shims earlier on that four-way tool post, but trust me, this is a lot easier. Once I feel that the tip of the tool is flush to the top of the gauge, I snug down that top nut. The best part? That's the last time I need to worry about that tool height for as long as that tool stays in that holder. This shot is just to show that your tool height is repeatable when you take the tool holder off and put it back on again. Since you only have to adjust tool height when you put a new tool in a holder, most people will end up with maybe 8 or 10 tool holders that just permanently hold your most used tools. Here we're showing the version of the tool holder that has the V-groove in the bottom for holding boring bars and any other round tools. Our handy lathe height gauge also serves as a sample to show how round tools fit in the V-groove. Tool holders are available in V-groove and flat bottom, and you'll probably end up with a mix of both. If you wanted just one type, I guess you'd get the V-groove, since these can hold flat and round tools, whereas the flat bottom holders can only hold flat tools. Also wanted to show you that there are dovetails on the back of the tool post, so you can hold boring bars and any other tool that needs to run parallel to the spindle axis. And you can see once more how quick the process to set your tool height is with this setup. So there you have it. Do you need the quick change tool post? Well, I'm the guy selling it to you, so I may be biased. But I hope this video showed you how both types of tool posts work, so you can decide for yourself if the quick change version is worth the extra cost. Whether you're team regular tool post or team quick change, let us know in the comments below if you think I missed anything. As always, thanks for watching.